Now, welcome students once again to JS Maths. Today, I am going to explain you a topic from class 10 that is coordinate geometry. Right? Now, till now we have studied only to locate the points. Just like if I want to locate 2, 5, where I will locate? These are the two axes. This is the x axis. This is the y axis. I have to locate 2, 5. That 2 is the abscissa that is located on x axis, just like 1 and 2. Now, 5 is the ordinate and it is plotted on y axis 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, my point is 2, 5, somewhere here. This is the point 2, 5. This we have done. We have studied in the lower classes how to locate a point x, y. That is, if there is a point x, y, this x is called abscissa and this y is called the ordinate. Now, and together they are called the coordinates. Coordinates. Now, in this topic, yeah, in this class, now we are going to move further. That is, we will study the quadrants. This is the first quadrant. This is the second, the third, and the fourth. Now, I will explain this concept of the quadrants. Now, <clears throat> the initial position is always taken as this, x-axis. It starts moving in this direction, anti-clockwise direction, which is taken as positive, right? Now, this is the first quadrant. This is the second. This is the third quadrant. This is the fourth quadrant, quadrant, right? There are four quadrants. That is, a plane is divided into four. That is, first quadrant, second, third, and fourth. Now, in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant, if I take any point x, y, this is my y axis, right? If I want to take a point x, y, it will be located in the first quadrant, x, y, both are positive. x is also positive and y is also positive. In the second quadrant, this is x dash, negative x axis. So in the second quadrant, it will be minus x, y. If I want to plot the coordinates, minus x, y, I have to plot them in the second quadrant. Now, in the third, both are negative. Both are negative. That is minus x, minus y. And in the fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. That is negative of y. This is the way we locate the points x, y, which means my abscissa is positive, my ordinate is positive. So I will locate them in the first quadrant, right? I will plot them in the first quadrant. If it is minus x, y, I will plot it here. If it is minus x, minus y, it is in the third. And if it is x, minus y, it is in the fourth quadrant. Now, I plotted a point 2, 5. Obviously, it will lie in the first quadrant. If I want to plot minus 2, 5, uh, my quadrant will be second, it will be located in the second quadrant. Now, if both are negative, say minus 2, comma, minus 5, this point will lie in the third quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. That is, abscissa is positive and the ordinate is negative. This is the way how we locate the points in the four, four quadrants. That is, first, second, third and the fourth quadrant. Now, we will move further. This is the first formula you will come across in this chapter. That is the distance between the two points. How can we find the distance between the two points? Now, first is, it is called distance formula. It is called distance formula. Now, I have a point P that is coordinates are x1, y1. I have a point Q, x2, comma, y2 are the coordinates of PQ. If I want to find the distance PQ, then PQ distance is 
डिफरेंस इन द एफसीसा दैट इज x2 टू माइनस एक्स वन इट्स होल स्केयर प्लस डिफरेंस इन द ऑर्डिनेट दैट इज वाई टू माइनस वाई वन होल स्केयर दिस इज कॉल्ड द डिस्टेंस फॉर्मूला ना आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट विद एग्जाम्पल से आई हैव टू पॉइंट टू कॉमो फोर दिस इज योर पी पॉइंट क्या हुआ इज माइनस थ्री कॉमो माइनस फाइव I need the distance between these two points. I will apply the above formula. This formula. This is my x two. This is my x one. Minus three minus two whole square plus minus five minus four whole square. That is minus five square is twenty five plus minus nine minus nine square is eighty one. That is six. 106 under the root is the distance between P and Q. This is the way how we find the distance between two given points. This is the first formula of the chapter coordinate geometry in class 10th, right? Distance formula. The concept of the coordinates is already known to you. We have done in lower classes the method to locate the point. Where it lies, right? Today I have explained you the quadrants in which that point will lie. Now the second topic or the second formula is called section formula. Section formula. What is the section formula? I have two points A and B, right? Now. There is some point P that is x comma y. A point is x one y one, and B point is x two comma y two. The ratio is m ratio n. That means AP upon PB is m upon n. The ratio is m ratio n. Now. How we will find the coordinates of point P? That is, abscissa of that is P of x. That is abscissa of the point P is m multiplied by x two plus n multiplied by x one divided by m plus n. This is the abscissa of point P. Now, the coordinate of point P is M y two n y one upon m plus n. This is the way how we find the abscissa and the ordinate of point P, which divides the join of A and B in the ratio m ratio n. Right now, P of x that is abscissa of point P is this m multiplied by x two. M multiplied by x1 and divided by m plus n. Now the ordinate is p of y, m y2 plus n y1 divided by m plus n. This is called the section formula, but this is for internal division, right? This is for internal division. Internal division. Now what is internal division? the point p lies somewhere within the length of ab it doesn't lie outside it lies somewhere between a and b ratio is m ratio n so we can find it abscissa of point p and the ordinate of point p like this and it is called internal division again the point p lies within ab that's why it is called internal division now i will tell you what is if this point p lies outside ab outside ab like this this is point a this is point b and this is point p x comma y ratio remains the same this is m and this is n it does not change now this is x1 y1 
This point is x2, comma, y2. Now P lies outside AB. This is for external division. External division. External division. Okay. P is lying outside the length of AB. That's why we call it as external division. And in order to find the abscissa and the ordinate, the formula is this. P of x, abscissa of point P, this is mx2 minus nx1 upon m minus n. Right? m is greater than n. m is greater than n. So m minus n. Then P of y is my2, the ordinate of point P, my2 minus n y1 divided by m minus n. This is for the external division because the point P lies outside the length of AB. Ratio is same as in case of the internal division. AP upon BP was AP upon BP was M ratio N in the internal division as well as the external division. But only difference is it's minus over here. M X2 minus N X1 divided by M minus N. M Y2 minus N Y1 divided by M minus N. This is the section formula for external division. I have done for the internal division. Now, what happens if M is equal to N? That is, the point P lies at the midpoint of AB. This is your point A, X1, Y1. This is point B, X2, Y2. P point lies in the middle of AB, X, Y, M, N. Here, M equals to N. Right? If M equals to N, then AP upon BP or PB is 1 upon 1. That is, both are equal to each other. That is 1 ratio 1. So I can write here 1. I can write here 1. Right? It is 1 ratio 1. In case M equals to N, P is in the middle of AB. Right? Then this formula is called midpoint formula. Midpoint formula. Midpoint formula is again it's an application of section formula only 1 into x2 that is x2 okay? plus 1 into x1 divided by 1 plus 1 that is 2. Same section formula is applied. Since m is equal to n, so I have taken the ratio as 1 ratio 1. The abscissa of my point P is this. Similarly, the ordinate of my point P will be y1 plus y2 divided by 2. This is called midpoint formula and these are the coordinates of point P. Abscissa is x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and the ordinate is y1 plus y2 divided by 2. This was the second concept that is the section formula. From the section formula we get midpoint formula when P lies within AB that is at the middle of midpoint of AB. Then it becomes a midpoint formula. Now, now the last but not the least how to find area of triangle whose vertices are given to us whose vertices are given whose vertices are given now let me draw it this is a vertex b and c this point is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 this is x3 y3 right now i need to find area of this triangle abc 
the vertices are defined A, B, and C. Now, how to find it? Formula is area triangle ABC is half, right? X1, Y2 minus Y3 plus X2, Y3 minus Y1 plus X3, Y1 minus Y2. This is the formula to find area of the triangle whose vertices are given to us. That is half times x1, y2 minus y3 plus x2, y3 minus y1 plus x3, y1 minus y2. It's magnitude. Sometimes we get this value as negative on solving this. So area of triangle cannot be negative so we take out the positive sign that is say if it comes out to be like this half times it comes out to be minus 7 don't write negative sign because I am finding area of the triangle area of triangle can never be negative so we will take this as 7 by 2 that's why I put the modulus I put the magnitude I put the positive I have to take the positive value of this that is if say after calculations I get minus 7 so I will take plus 7 because the area of triangle can never be negative I hope you have understood this concept the section formula and the distance formula right now last is how we say that given points that is A, B, C they are collinear three points are collinear A, B, C they are collinear means they lie on the same straight line A, B and C they lie on the same straight line condition is area triangle is equal to 0 area triangle ABC equals to 0 for three points to be collinear collinear means all the three points they lie on the same straight line for that area of triangle must be equal to 0 these were the basic formulas which, which will be used in this chapter of yours that is coordinate geometry first one is the distance formula how to find distance between two given points second was section formula for internal division for external division and how it became a midpoint formula when the point P was within that is at the midpoint of AB the formula to find area of a triangle whose vertices are given A vertex B C they are given to you how to find this area that is area triangle ABC is given by this formula if area triangle ABC equals to 0 then we can say that the three points A B C they are collinear right now this finishes the introduction to this chapter quantum geometry you should remember these formulas in my next lecture i will solve problems based on these formulas thank you remember the formulas revise the formulas we will solve many problems on these formulas thank you have a nice day